You know, in traveling, <clears throat> there's a word for happy occurrences called serendipity, which has happened to me a lot of times. I don't know what's the opposite when things go terribly wrong during traveling. If someone knows, please do inform me of that word. But that, whatever has happened to me now. So as we came down from Machu Picchu and uh, to the Machu Picchu city, there's a city called Machu Picchu as well, a small city of about seven to 8,000 people. And this is where people come and stay in hotel, very touristy kind of a city. And then they go to Machu Picchu. So when we came down from Machu Picchu, we were told that rights, political rights have spread all over Peru. There's a state of emergency or curfew and military has been posted on all airports and uh, all the uh, cities and everything. And now from Machu Picchu, the only way to get to Cusco, which is the biggest city where the airport is from where my flight is, the only, <clears throat> the only way to get there is a train because the distance between the two cities is is within the Andes Mountains, so there's no roads here. There's only a train track, and the train comes a few times a day bringing tourists to and fro. And that train service has been suspended. It has been suspended now ever since we went to Machu Picchu, so two days ago. So we've been waiting two days in Machu Picchu. Every day there's assurance that it will the tourist evacuation will happen tomorrow and nothing happens, then the following day, day came and the same assurance from the government or from the touring agencies that uh, government will make a plan to evacuate the tourists. There are about 775 tourists that are stuck here. Now I've got a flight to Amazon tomorrow and I cannot take a chance of being here and nothing happens tomorrow. So the only option for me is not to walk. 80 kilometers through the Andes mountain to Cusco will take me 12, 14, hell knows how many hours. I've arranged a guide and a porter to carry some luggage. I'm going to start the journey 80 kilometers through the Andes mountains. Will be fun, might be pain. Might be a test. I don't know, but I have to do it. Wish me luck. And I'm going to keep you posted as we get along on a journey by foot from Machu Picchu to Cusco, 80 kilometers. It's about 10 a.m. here. I'm going to start in the next half an hour. It'll probably be midnight by the time we get to Cusco. But I'll try and capture as much as I can on my way by foot from Machu Picchu to Cusco. Stay with me. So guys, the journey has started through the Andes mountain. And luckily, we got, we made the, we made the first move and then there are other tourists that have agreed to come with us. So it's a small entourage. There's about eight, 10 of us, two porters, two guides, and off we go. Are you, are you taking a rain poncho? Yeah. Yes. Got, are you ready to take the rain poncho? Yeah, I've got rain poncho. Okay. Got the mosquito got repellent. Goodbye Machu Picchu, despite what you did to me, I'm still going to have good memories of you. This guy that you just saw was basically informing us that we're doing it at our own risk. And he counted the people, he took the videos of us in case we don't make it. But it's beautiful, let me show you around.
I have to do this for 80 kilometers. So there's a lot to see. Let's continue. And then just to crown it all as it was not difficult enough. And it started to rain. I'll show you. So I've been walking for 10 kilometers, did 10, 10 kilometers in about 1 hour 27 minutes, not bad. You know when you go from Machu Picchu to Cusco, <clears throat> as I said earlier, Machu Picchu is actually lower than Cusco. Cusco is almost 3,600 meters above the sea level, so that's like about 13,000 feet. And Machu Picchu is about 2,500. So actually going in a way uphill, walking, I've done about 14, 15 k's till now. And you can't go too fast because of the altitude, you know. So local people, what they would do is, they would chew cocoa leaves. And they believed cocoa leaves opens up the lungs, increases, increases your functional capacity. I wish I had bought cocoa leaves from Machu Picchu. But you see what was happening in Machu Picchu was because Machu Picchu is like in the middle of a middle of Andes mountain. It's a small city and it's completely reliant on goods being delivered from Cusco. With no train coming in for two days, the city was running low on uh, normal day things. Food, water, gold rings, whatever. And uh, I could see the shops were closed. Many shops were closed all the time. And then one shopkeeper told me, well, this is the reason they don't have any more supplies. And now walking, the group that we have is uh, 14 of us in this group walking. Besides us, that's me and Arham, my son, uh, the few Americans, uh, Spanish family, Italian family and then we have a guide and two porters who are carrying some luggage for some people especially the ladies who cannot carry them carrying the luggage for them and we march along through the Andes mountain never in my wildest imagination I thought I'll do it you know that's what traveling is that's what exploring is you should always be prepared to go through this I've got let me check. Hell. 64 kilometers to go. Let's carry on. <laughs> so just came this little farmer house, eh? Look at it. The location of it. In the middle of the... Wow! I wouldn't mind living here. At least not tonight. Plus as these dogs do not like our presence. Look at the clouds on the mountain. Isn't it beautiful? It takes the pain of this terribly long walk away this beautiful scenery of Andes Mountain. So Aram, yeah. Daisy, yeah. he managed to get some cocoa leaf from Mr. Uber. 
Yeah, he said he's the cocodrilo. So he's going to try it. I don't know. I don't have the courage. So Adam's going to eat some cocodrilo and tell me how does it. Clean it. Clean it. That's it. You eat like a cow. Yeah, and then just chew it for. You eat it like a sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell me if it improves your walking performance. Okay, guys. Let's move on. I think we have done about 23, 24 kilometers. And I'm telling you, it's not the distance that matters that much because I'm really walking very slow for my pace. I'm quite used to walking, running, all that. What's killing me and everyone is this. So you have to continuously walk on these little rocks with your hurting your feet, twisting your ankle and that's what makes it extremely difficult 80 to 90 percent of your if you walk is on these little rocks sometimes you get a little little area like this where you can walk comfortably but then 70 meter it ends and you're back on the rocks you know there was another which was through here, through the through the thicket, my guide, our guide, Mr. Uber, whom we just saw feeding Aram cocaine, <laughs> he was telling me that you know through the woods, through the Andes mountain, through the jungle, it's shorter and more comfortable because you don't have to walk on those rocks. But he said he's got a good sense of humour. He said, you don't want to end up on a puma's dining table. Puma, is, you know, is the big cat of this area. Ingenious hunter. Very clever animal. So, he said, the safest is to walk by the rail track. Because pumas naturally evade uh, this part where the rail track is. And you'll be safe. So, we took the safer option. But hell, it's difficult walking on those rocks for 23, 24 kilometers now. And another 55, 56 to go. Halfway, 40 kilometers done, another 40 to go. I think I've lost probably five to six kilos. <laughs> the group has broken up like it always, like it always happens on long walks. I think I'm far ahead, the rest of the group is behind. But there are guides with them, there's coaches with them, so I don't need to worry about them. And so, we'll continue. I just thought I'll celebrate half a mark with a well-deserving chocolate, some coke and continue. And it is raining like it rains in the Andes mountain. The gods are cra angry with me. First, the train service broke down. Then, uh, well, let me show you something. So, you see these guys there in the front? They've got this kind of a, I don't know what you call it, manual carriage on the rail. So, they're providing a service for the tourist at a very minimal cost, I must say, like 50 solace, which is like about 15 US dollars. And they're really pulling, eh? The three guys were pulling it on the railway rail line so what we've done is we've put the ladies in our group in that carriage and some of the luggage and we're carrying on and it's raining 
like hell. But seriously raining. God bless me. You know, you thought a gentleman, eh? You put all the ladies in this contraption, whatever you call it, a manual carriage, and heads off to these Inca boys. They're actually going uphill, eh? With how many? Six people and a lot of luggage. One in the front, two blocks at the back. Just amazing. Heads off to you, strong Inca boys. Proud of you. Ladies are having a right. And we march on. Ah, there's a traffic jam. There's this contraption from the front, and there's a contraption that carries the ladies from our group. How are they going to go about it? How? Oh. I have no idea. Oh, they should going to derail it, I think. The smaller one, which is carrying an older couple. A motorbike, two buckets, and I think a can full of kerosene oil. Maybe taking it to Machu Picchu, as they've run out of, as they're running out of merchandise. There it is. So they take the smaller contraption out of the railway track, and the bigger contraption carries on the journey. And the dog looks on with. <laughs> doesn't like it, eh? This talk. <laughs> hasn't seen anything like this. Yo, that's amazing, ingenious. Necessity is the mother and sometimes mother-in-law of all inventions. Let's carry on. And I understand a guy has told us to come back off the rail track there's a little Inca village here. There it is. And he's seeing us to come through there. And he says it's a shortcut. Or maybe he's taking us for a coffee or something. Not sure. As I said earlier, I have no intentions of ending up on Mr. Puma's dining table. Oh, okay, there's a little restaurant he's taking us to. He'll probably have a coffee or something. Oh, that's very nice of him. What more can you need in this mountains? Look at that. Isn't it divine? Made by God himself. Walking for close to 50 kilometers and then somebody, someone offers you a coffee. I'm not gonna refuse it. Let's take a break. Huh? At someone's house here that we have stopped. Saving coffee, rejuvenating. There's Mr. Aram, exhausted. More than me. Or maybe as much as me. For the journey and beyond. So after the welcome break, the journey continues, 29 kilometers to go. And luckily what has happened now, the ladies in this contraption, which is coming behind me, have kindly agreed to take my luggage on the carriage, so I've got nothing to carry now. So hopefully we'll make the last 28-29 kilometer whatever is left bit easier. Let's continue. So this, uh, this carriage is also like a courier service. They brought in this bicycle for this house up here. And some other, this tin roof, something else which they are offloading here. And then they'll continue. So shall we. I'm almost touching 60 k's, 60 kilometers. As you would have noticed, we have kind of broken away from the railway track and we're walking on a muddy, grassy path, which is a very welcome relief to my ankles and my toes. And the scenery, 
as beautiful as it's been for last almost 60 kilometers. Almost touching 70 kilometer mark. And you see, once you have done so much, I think you become mechanized, like a machine, like that contraption that's been pulled by the three Inca boys on the rail line. One Inca boy at the front, two Inca boys at the back. So I feel the same. I don't, know, I don't feel tired now. I'm not hungry. I'm not thirsty. I don't know. I feel like that contraption with three invisible forces pulling me. One from the front, two from the back. Anyway, 10 kilometers to go. And... This is the path. The three guys ahead of me. And the rest is behind me. They were the boys. And the scenery is as beautiful as we started. Clouds going low on the peak. And these are beautiful. Truly beautiful. Any explorer who wants to do it, I mean, you must do it by choice, not by bias, by compulsion. But come in Andes for a hike, for a walk, just for a day. A planned trip, you'll love it. Last three kilometers. We finally In reached Cusco, where a van picked us up, but merely a few kilometers ahead, a group of protesters stopped us and they didn't allow the van to proceed. They asked us to get off the van and start walking. So, and our journey on foot continued. Good evening. It's three in the morning and I've just come to my hotel room about half an hour ago and took a shower and I've ordered food for myself. From the time we left Machu Picchu and the time we got to Cusco, the 80 kilometer walk through the Andes, mountains and jungles and woods, it took us close to 14 hours. And I must admit, this must have been one of the toughest 14 hours of my traveling life. In the end of this vlog, I just want to say, the traveling is such, you know, you should be prepared for these unforeseen circumstances. The political riots in Peru just erupted and all the services, airports are shut down, the trains are closed down and, and we had to take the chance. There are 775 tourists stuck in Machu Picchu. Only 14 of us took the risk and braved the weather, the rain, the thunder, and 80 kilometer walk through the Andes mountains to get to get to Kisco, which has got an airport. And as soon as the airport opens, we will proceed with our journeys. Other 761 tourists stuck there, many are old who cannot walk 80 kilometers. Many have children who obviously cannot uh, walk the 80 kilometer journey. I sincerely hope for my fellow travelers stuck in Machu Picchu that the government does make a plan to evacuate them as soon as they can because it's really uh, very annoying and very frustrating. Thanks for being with me. This is not my normal style of making a blog about journeys but this is such an unusual occurrence. I thought I'll share my experience with you of this huge hike of 80 kilometers and Hopefully the airports will open tomorrow and we can continue with our explorations and our journey further into the Andes, into the Amazon forest, into the Amazon river and beyond. Thanks for being with me. Good night.